Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkarm Duels, and today I'm going to be doing a debut deck profile of my Vendrids. Now, this deck is actually pretty interesting. I really enjoy this deck. It's a ritual-based zombie deck that takes inspiration from Spawn and Resident Evil, which is really, really cool. Uh, I really love the way that they did the artwork of these cards, but without further ado, let's get straight on into it and see what we're playing. And you guys know, I'm a sucker for zombies, so let's get straight on into this. So first off, we're going to play one copy of the new Revendred Executor. Uh, he's kind of like the boss monster, but he's only really good as a one-of. Um, when this Ritual Summon card is on the field, your opponent cannot target cards you, you control uh, with card effects except this one, which is really, really cool. Uh, but like I said, he's just a really good one-of because he takes a couple of cards to actually commit to make him. Um, then we play one copy of Vendred Battlelord. Uh, Vendred Battlelord is a really good card in the deck, but he's again kind of one of those one ofs. Uh, he's kind of like a shock master because he has the effect that um, you can banish one Vendred card from your graveyard and declare one type of card, monster, spell, or trap, and for the rest of the turn your opponent cannot activate cards or effects with that type, which is really cool because he can make it like if you know your opponent has a bunch of monster effects that are set, you can banish a card from your graveyard, have him on the field, and then attack into them with a 2700 beater, which is really, really good. He's a good one of. I wouldn't probably play him at any more than one of because, sadly, these two are not searchable by pre-prep. I know everybody that plays Vendridge just about knows that, but he's actually not searchable by pre-prep, which kind of sucks. Um, then we play three copies of Revendred Slayer. Slayer is the best one because it's searchable with pre-preparations of rights. Um, the other thing about Slayer is is that when it's involved in a battle, once per battle, if it battles an opponent's monster during damage calculation, you can banish a zombie monster from your graveyard and make it gain an additional 300. That seems kind of lackluster to me, but his other effect that when he is... Um, if he's Ritual Summon is sent to the graveyard, you can add a Ritual spell from your um, deck to your hand, which is cool. And then you get to send a Vendred monster from your deck to the graveyard. I really like that effect because it makes it really easily um, recyclable because there's one that actually sp summons them from the grave, which is nice. Um, that's it. We only play five copies of the uh, Ritual Monsters. I don't play Chimera. I just couldn't really find room for Chimera, and it was lackluster compared to the other ones. Um, I think it just replaced itself or something like that. It didn't have any real significant effect. Um, so that's why I'm not playing it. It's maybe a good one of if I was going to play it at anything in this deck. Um, but I don't currently play it. So that's it for the ritual monsters. For the Vendred actual monsters, we play two copies of Revenant. Uh, I know some people play one of each uh, Vendred zombie, but I like to play one. I like to play two Revenants because, in my opinion, it's the best one. Each one of the uh, Vendred zombie monsters has a special ability that allows you to give your ritual monster a special ability if you use them to ritual summon the monster. Like, Revenant's ability is that once per turn, you can target a special summon monster your opponent controls and banish it. Then we play Hound Horde at one. This is another one that I'm thinking about bumping up to two. Hound Horde's effect is that you can banish a um, spell or trap your opponent controls once per turn, and it's a quick effect, so you can do it on either player's turn. Same thing with uh, Revenant. I'm thinking about bumping up Hound Horde to two, um, but I haven't really found the room yet, but I'm really thinking about doing this to two, and two Revenant, two Hound Horde, because honestly, the best two. Um, one copy of Striggs. Um, Striggs is it's good. Um... After damage calculation, if this card battled an opponent's monster, you can draw a card, then discard a card. It helps you, like, if you have a Mizuki in the hand or a um, Shiranui in the hand, you can discard it and send it to the grave. Um, we play one copy of Core. Your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. It gives the original monster that ability. Um, and then one copy of Anima. Now, there's some combos with Anima that lets you... Um, get it into the grave, and it has a special ability that you can, um, if it's in your graveyard, you can banish it, then target one of your banished Vendred monsters and special summon it, which is really cool, but you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except zombies, but that's not that big a deal. Then its other uh, effect is banish any monster destroyed by battle uh, with this card. It gives that ability to the Vendred that is ritual summoned with it. Um, then we play one copy of Gozuki. It's kind of just one of those mill cards. It lets you send um, a zombie from your deck to the grave. Really good card. It, it helps. Um, and you can banish the zombie from your graveyard, monster from your graveyard. Um, except a copy of Gozuki, special summon the zombie monster from your hand, which is nice. Um, then we play three copies of Mizuki. This is essentially Monster Reborn. 
um, for zombies. And I'm really glad that I got to play three different copies of it. I got a common, a mosaic, and a rare version of it, which is kind of neat. Um, then I play three copies of Unizombie. If you guys have ever played a zombie deck, you know what this does. But if you don't, I will tell you really quickly. And I'm going to scoot these up because we have more monsters. Um, Unizombie's effect is that you can send... It's a tuner monster to begin with. It, you can send a um, zombie monster from your deck to the grave to increase its level. Or you can send a zombie... or And you can send a uh, zombie monster from your hand to increase its level as well by one. Which is nice. Usually you stop at four by sending one from deck to grave. Because then it lets you go for Omega if you send like a Mizuki from deck to grave. Which is nice. Um, because then you can get a level four Revenant back from the grave. And then either Overlay or Synchro into like Omega. Then we play three copies of Shiranui Solitaire. Um, Solitaire is just here to summon out our Unizombie. That's pretty much it. You just summon him, tribute him, and then special summon Unizombie. And then one Spectral Sword. Um, Spectral Sword, if it's in the grave, you can banish it, and then it lets you summon Archfiend, um, which is nice. Uh, we play a couple of the um, Synchro Monsters. It kind of you, you can use it, and it's pretty easy to use and climb with it. It's not hard to, um, so that's why we're playing one copy of it. So then, that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells really quick. Now, it's difficult to get up into the higher ones in this deck, but you can get into the higher synchro monsters. It's rare, but you don't really need the extra deck all that much. It's usually just Omega or Beals, and then the Ritual monsters, and then you win. Like, if you're... I mean, that's the way you play the deck. So, then we play two copies of the new copy of um, Vendred, or Revendred uh, Evolution. This card is really busted um you can use this card to summon any vendred ritual monster which is cool from your hand or grave this is the one i was talking about that lets you summon it from the hand or grave both of them actually uh revendred origin and revendred uh Re evolution lets you summon it from the hand or grave which is neat um you can also tribute monsters from your hand or field and or send a vendred monster from your deck which is really good. I'm thinking about bumping this up to three. It's another one of those cards that I've just been playing around with. Do I want to play one, or do I want to play two or three? It's one of those. And But I found that two kind of is consistent because it's, again, not searchable by pre-prep. So it's one of those, I draw it when I need it, I don't when I don't. Um, but the only thing that sucks about this card, and the reason I'm playing it at two, is the ritual monster is destroyed during the next end phase that's summoned with this card, which sucks. Um, then I play three copies of Revendred Origin. This one is the one that's searchable by pre-prep. It's basically the staple, uh, ritual card that you need. Um, then I play two copies of Vendred Charge. Uh, Vendred Charge is you send a zombie monster from your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard. Usually it's going to be from your hand. It's going to be like a Mizuki or that Spectral Sword. Um, and then you special summon any Vendred monster from your deck. It can't be a ritual monster. It has to be a regular monster. Um, you have to correctly ritual summon monsters um and you can't just use this to summon it which sucks but you you have to do it this way um then we play three copies of vendred knights um this is essentially kind of like black whirlwind in a way if you've ever played black wings you discard a um card add a vendred monster from your deck to your hand which is nice uh, it's kind of like that searching ability where you have a face-up spell to have that search. And when your Vendred monster destroys an opponent's monster of a battle, you can banish a Vendred for monster from your graveyard and can attack again in a row, which is nice. It combos with Slayer, so a Vendred Slayer can go up and up and up and just keep climbing um, attack points. And it, it just really works. Um, three copies of Pre-Prep of Right because you need to be able to get out. It's like you're playing six copies of Revendred Origin and six copies of Slayer. So it's really, it, it's good. It helps. I'm only playing two copies of um, Pre-Prep. You don't need but two. Um, I know it's at three now, but you don't need but two. Um, and then finally, for the last two spells, I play, or three spells, I play three copies of Allure because just about everything in the deck besides the Mizukis and the Shiranui's are um, darks. So that's it for the spells, and I'm playing two cop two traps. Um, these are the cards that are really, 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 really neat, and you almost auto win when you get it to work, uh, and it's not hard to get it to go off. And I'm playing two copies of Vendred Daybreak. Now this card's really neat. Um, it's a board wipe. And it's really nice. Uh, if your opponent controls more cards than you do, you can choose one ritual summoned Vendred monster you control and destroy all cards on the field except that one, um, which is nice. And there's a quick little combo that I kind of want to show you guys. You can activate this. Um, and then if you have, say, Battle Lord and Slayer on field, 
like this, and you have uh, Revengered Origin Engrave, you can banish this and save them both by targeting the Battle Lord and then banish it for Slayer's effect because it saves it like Return of the Dragon Lords, which is really nice. And you get to keep your field and your opponent loses theirs. So that's why I'm playing two copies of Daybreak is because it's just really, really, really good in my opinion. Um, but that's it for the main deck. Let me put these cards back really quick, guys, and we will get into the extra deck. So... Really good main deck. I really enjoy this deck. Um, really fun, 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 fun deck. Um, I really think that Konami could have done a little bit more with the deck, but hey, whatever. It's still fun, and I love the artwork. So, for playing two copies of Omega, because it's not a zombie deck without Omega, um, and Omega is really, really, really good in this deck because it ban rips a card out of your opponent's hand, um, and it, it's just stupid good. It has some other synergy with the deck, too. Um, then I'm playing one copy of... Um, the level 6 Chirinui Synchro Monster, because it's really easy to do this plus Revenant, uh, or not this plus Revenant, but this plus your, um, what's it called, uh, damn, Spectral Sword. This and Spectral Sword and Revenant, um, makes the, this right here, uh, really easy to make, really fun to make, um, and then lets you climb into the next one, which is Shogun Saiga, but mostly you're going to be making this, which is Archfiend Zombie Skull, um, because face-up zombie monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects, which is really, really good. Um, really easy to make this um, with the Spectral Sword or with um, Unizombie, because you can put, like, Unizombie and a Hound Horde. Or not Unizombie and a Hound Horde. You can only make this with Spectral Sword, really. Or if you get that off chance that you core our Anima and uh, Unizombie that's level 4, you can make this. But that's not going to happen. Usually you're just going to make this with Spectral Sword. Um... Then we play one copy of Beals, because Unizombie plus anything makes this, as long as it's a dark. Both of them are dark. Well, not both of them, just the tuner is dark, so it's really easy. And Beals, a lot of decks don't have an out to this, so you make this and you put it in defense mode, or you put it in attack mode, and you just start swinging with it, and they can't they can't get rid of it. Um, or if you're playing against Red Eyes, and you get Flare Metal, and you use this, and it just keeps going up, and it burns you to death, which sucks. Um... <laughs> Shirinui, uh, Shogun Saiga, you can climb into this. It's really easy because it just requires a zombie and a um, one or more zombie tuner monsters. Um, really easy to make. Uh, same thing with Shogun Saiga, really easy to make. Um, if you make this and this is in the... Or you have a Spectral Sword and you've already made this with like a Unizombie and something else, um, you can make this really easy and it's a 35 walloping stick. And it's it's kind of there if you need it. If it's, I mean, you don't have to make it if you don't want to, um, but it's there. Um, then I only play two level or rank fours, and that's a Baguska, Plan B, um, and Castell, because you don't really need anything else. Uh, you don't overlay all that much. Usually it's a mainly focused around your synchros and a couple of link monsters, but mostly around your ritual monsters. Uh, we play Bo Borload. Uh, Borload's really not that tough to go into this deck because you can special summon a lot in this deck. Uh, Topologic, Trisbana. Um, if your opponent's playing a lot of back row, you make this and then special summon something. Um, into its back row, which is easy. Again, use Mizuki into the back row, and it banishes all spells and traps and burns your opponent for 500 each. Not hard to pull off and devastating when you do. Um, Deco Talker, if you don't need Trispania and you just need something big, you make um, Deco Talker. I'm telling you, Trispania is going to be one of my new signature cards. You're going to see this a lot in my extra deck. Um, two Vampire Sucker. Uh, I, I am still amazed that this got past Konami, um, and they actually let it go by and call it Vampire Sucker. Um, but really good card. Um, you get to target a monster in your opponent's graveyard and special summon it to their opponent's side of the field as a zombie monster. And, but if you need that draw card, it's not too bad. You target something little, put it on their field, and then swing in this deck against it with Vampire Sucker, and you get to draw a card. So, easy. And then one copy of Underclock Talker. Again, really necessary to have. But that's it, guys. That's it for the deck. I really hope you enjoyed this deck. I really enjoyed putting this together. Be on the lookout for vampires. That's probably going to be next month, depending on the prices of them. I'm going to try and get a hold of them uh, pretty quickly. I don't know how quickly it'll be, but I'm going to try and be doing vampires soon. Um, as soon as I can get a hold of the cards and they get not really expensive. But I hope they're not, because I think Sky Striker is going to be the pursuit card but anyways guys this is dark room duelist i hope you enjoyed this deck i really enjoyed putting this deck together for you guys and this deck is really really fun i highly suggest you play it it's really cheap to be honest the main deck is not that expensive it's like maybe 40 bucks 
maybe 40 bucks for the main deck. The extra deck can be, you know, as expensive as you want to make it. Um, you don't have to have the, I mean, you need the, you need at least one Omega in the deck deck. But I mean, you could get away with making this deck for maybe 60 bucks, maybe tops. Um, and not playing everything I'm playing in the extra deck, like Topol or uh, like Boral Load and stuff like that. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed taking it and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around, guys, and don't forget to check out my Patreon down in the description below. See you around, guys.